I'd just been in London about a year or two. Uh, so the whole, I was sort of exploding, you know, the city was just sort of exploding my consciousness, you know, things that I was seeing and, and doors that were opening into all kinds of things. And I used to go to the Academy in Oxford Street. I have a strong sense that I saw this film at the Academy Cinema in Oxford Street, which I don't know if anybody here remembers, but it was, anybody remember? I don't think it exists anymore, but it was, uh, I think I used to see almost everything there. I was very sort of anti-Hollywood then and would never have been, you know, going to see American movies. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, I did see, I mean, that's where I first saw Bergman, Tarkovsky, Fellini, you know, I mean, that whole sort of world of Italian, French, Russian, and Asian cinema was sort of opened up to me there. So it was a bit of a sort of temple, you know. So, so it, it, I mean, it's Ray's first film. So was, was this also your first film, uh, first experience of Indian cinema? I didn't, it didn't invite me to sort of explore Indian cinema um, more, but I, I mean, it was simply, it is, I think, a, a masterpiece, you know. Uh, not a, a word I often use, but um, it, it was the most beautiful film I'd ever seen. I think it was the first time I, I, I realized that a film could be a work of art yeah. in itself. And in fact, every frame of the film is, is a thing of beauty. I don't know how many of you have seen it before, but it is exquisite. And I, hadn't, I saw it at the weekend, having chosen it for this event, and I hadn't seen it for 30 years. And I was very, very apprehensive and thought, God, maybe I won't have any, you know. But in fact, it's mind-blowingly beautiful film, I think. And then... I mean, at that point in time, you know, I guess you know, most people encountering that film would know very little yeah. about the ideas behind the yeah. film, the source, the book, you know, perhaps an, a, 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 um, that inspired the film. Um, were, you, were you conscious of the, the way in which Ray had put the film together? So, for instance, you know, except for the, some of the, the, the main actors in the film, most of the actors were actually not actors. They were, they were, you know, they were locals, the West Bengalis. Yes. Were, were yes. you aware of that when you saw the film? I don't know whether I was aware of it. It, it. it comes almost clear. You can almost tell who's an actor. They're all very, very good, but you can almost tell who's an actor and who's not. And when he's made editorial cho choices to sort of carve a performance out of that boy, who's obviously not a child actor. He's a... Um, Apu, the central character. But, um, no, I mean, uh, that's right. I think I came to it with absolutely no conception or preconceptions. I hadn't read about it. I hadn't... Um, I was probably quite intimidated by the idea of seeing an Indian director's film. And I think the great door that it opened for me was sort of... I mean, Satyajit, Ray, uh, Satyajit Ray's sort of commanding humanity, the power of his humanity when he's filmmaking, his... Um, in the intelligence he brings to bear and the compassion he brings to bear, married to this very, very beautiful visual eye that he has, was sort of a door, a, a great, a great door for me opening into my political life. Really, you know, I mean, it, it was one of maybe four or five films I saw over of a year or two, which really shaped my political convictions, or rather kindled something which I mean political in the, in the, in the greatest in the largest sense of the word um, I suppose it, it, it it's a film about poverty but it's not a film about the horrors of it. it it inspires compassion for the characters who are experiencing the poverty but it also reveals the, the incredible dignity of that way of life and the way he will well you will see but I mean it has a kind of almost ethnographic quality so he's he's observing not just the events of this narrative the story but he's observing the way these people live secretly and privately or with each other, uh, the tools of their everyday life. I love the time he takes to explore how food is eaten, how hand is washed, how teeth are brushed when you don't have a toothbrush, how uh, the, the rituals of everyday life are, are, are sort of lovingly and, and observed. And he takes his time. He takes whatever time he feels like taking. He, he pays no concessions to sort of some idea that the audience will be bored or that it needs to move things on, you know, all those sort of um, truisms that, that often shape cinema now. It's very slow, but absolutely, you know, riveting. And so the, he, he's telling the story on so many levels as a result because of the narrative of the story, but also the observation of their, of their way of life is another kind of narrative. And you come to learn an enormous amount about, about, about this... This mm. way of this way of living in in Bengal in India. Um, did it 
did it tell you anything about acting? I don't remember having that. I mean, I don't think I, uh, although I was a, a, a drama student at the time, it wasn't in that capacity that I was watching it. It was just, it, it, it wasn't an epiphany for me as an actress. It was an epiphany for me as a human being, I think. I mean, you know, wonderful films made by people who aren't actors are always a little bit threatening for people who are actors because, you know, it would render us um, redundant. And uh, there were some very great films made at that time by people who were using real people. It was a, it was a sort of vogue for using real people as opposed to actors, which, um, you know, we, we were quick to disapprove of, of course, because uh, we thought we should be able to do it better. But the reality is it is often very magical when, it, when, when real people are being used. Um, and he does use these, these people brilliantly. Um, I mean, I think the ma my main sense, I was uh, probably 18 or 19 years old when I saw this film. And I think I could never have expected to understand or connect with a film made by a, a, an elderly Indian film director born in Calcutta. Um, and yet, I think I remember when I saw it thinking that it was a film that I profoundly understood and connected with. And I had that sense that I think I then went on to have, you know, many times during my life that I was watching a film that was profoundly foreign and at the same time not foreign at all, you know, and that is what all great art does, I think, which is that, you know, it, it, it's, it transcends the boundaries of culture and race and, and speaks to everybody and that's a sort of commonplace thing to say now, but at 18 or 19 I hadn't really come across that concept that, you know, somebody could make a film in Japan or in India or somebody can write a poem in, in Alaska and, and it, it, it can speak to you or I with, with, great, with more profundity or more meaning than some, something written or made by a person next door. And it's an amazing sense that, you know, something made by somebody as exotic as, as Satyajit Ray could speak to all sorts of things about my own life or um, was a revelation to, to me. Will you put your hands together, please, for Juliet Stevenson? Thank you.